Hi, my name is Priyada Liu, otherwise known as Mulan by most of my friends. Fun fact, it's common for Thai people to have a nickname and it's something that we go by. So this video is showing you my IB visual arts portfolio that I did from 2018 to 2019 and I'll give you guys some tips and tricks I've gathered along the way at the end. So the video is divided into three sections. The first part is explaining what is IB art, the second part is showing my portfolio and then the last part is the tips and tricks. So the first section is what is IB art? So IB art is different from from AP art and A levels art because it's divided into three components. The first part is exhibition, the second part is PP which stands for process portfolio, the third part is CS which stands for comparative studies. So PP is basically a process um, portfolio that documents how you make each work kind of like a sketchbook or research journal and then CS is basically comparative studies which is does like the theory side of things. So if you want to see my submissions for PP and CS, they are on the website that I'll link down below. Oh, also, if you see me looking down uh, most of the time, it's because I'm referring to my laptop right here for my notes. So this video will be talking about the exhibition part. So for exhibition, you have to submit 8 to 10 works, and then you have to submit a picture of your setup at the end of it. So now I'll be going into my portfolio. So my body of works primarily centers around the idea of a Thai diaspora because as a Thai migrant myself, um, moving into Singapore, I constantly struggle between the different cultures and also I wanted to explore the cultural assimilation of how someone, especially a migrant, kind of assimilate into a new environment. So these are my overview of my works. So in total, I have nine works, each spanning from prints to installations, sculptures, paintings, ceramic pieces, and a film in the end. So my first work is titled Imprint. So Imprint consists of 40 gold hand prints of Thai migrants enacting the Thai greeting Y. If you don't know, it's a Thai greeting in which the palms are pressed together. So for this work, I went around Golden Mound, which is basically like a Thai enclave in Singapore. And I've asked each migrant to enact the Thai greeting and then press their hand into gold ink onto the black paper. So the print actually mimics the signing of an edition of print. They have a edition and then like a signing the name Below. So for my version, it's like I included the name of the migrants and then the date that they actually came to Singapore itself. So also why I decided to use handprint is because I wanted to suggest the idea of birth certificate because when you're born, your footprint or handprint? Footprint or handprint? One, one of them, the prints essentially, is on a, your birth certificate and then it's because every individual handprint is different so it helps to mark an individual. And also the act of the handprint in general, using this symbol, is supposed to act as a fact well to their past and also but also a greeting into a new beginning. So my second word is titled Y, which is the name of the action in Thai. So Y is a continuation from imprint, the previous work. As the black and white photographs actually are the isolated gold handprints from the imagery that I've used before. So the zine itself actually mimics like those documents, like those official documents you have for migrants, but instead of very stale, stagnant, just like portrait photos, it's actually taken in the shop that they were in or like in the household that they were in because I wanted the audience to be given insight into like who they are as a migrant and then what is that going on in their life. This also helps to allude to the question of why they chose to migrate migrate itself. For this work, I decided to print on tracing paper and also in a pretty small scale because I feel that the fragility and the small size of it allows the audience to actually, when they flip through it, handle it with more care. So one thing that my teacher pointed out to me but I didn't realize was that when you flip each individual um, photograph, the palms of the person previously actually meets the next person. So in a sense, they're like greeting each other and forming like a community of Thai migrants, you know? Yeah, to I totally meant that. Yeah, she adds to my concept. So moving on to my third work, which is titled Migration. So Migration is a black and white print that portrays the movement of people into a new environment. And also in this work, I wanted to talk about how, although people don't really notice this as much, but due to globalization and also refugee crisis and many more factors, migration has become very increasingly prominent. And so that's why my work aims to portray the notion of migration itself in a very dramatic light. Therefore, I use the very high contrast, very kind of like looks very cinematic, uh, black and white print to show uh, importance and emphasis on the subject. So the silhouettes that you can see here in the prints itself is actually dressed in traditional Thai clothing and they're carrying sacks to mimic like oh they're moving or they're migrating to somewhere else. 
Yes! So as you can see, the first three works, which consists of uh, imprint, why and migration is kind of like talking about the idea of migration and Thai migrants in a larger sense or like the notion of migrating itself. So moving on to the second half of my body of works, I'll be talking about the Thai enclave and how after when they moved to the Singapore itself, they begin to form a community. So you can see this most in my fourth work, which is titled In Unity There Is Strength. So in Unity There Is Strength, it comprises of these acrylic pieces, which is yellow acrylic engraved with faces of Thai migrants in a Golemao complex, which is a Thai enclave where all the Thai communities, Thai shops everywhere, it's like a shop, this huge, huge shopping mall. In Unity There Is Strength basically reconstructs the Thailand national flower Rachapru that comprises of dense clusters of yellow petals that bloom despite harsh conditions. So the flower itself actually serves as a metaphor for the Thai community as I found out that these flowers only bloom in very very harsh conditions and one of the things that I've learned also from talking to these migrants and from my personal experience is that migrants' um, cultural assimilation to Singapore is actually eased through meeting other migrants and forming their own kind of like community and bond through it. So that's why I chose this flower and I felt that having the petals as individual as one migrant and then forming a dense cluster and allowing them to bloom despite the harsh conditions of a near environment is very meaningful. Additionally, the hanging installation alludes to the migrants as saying not rooted to a place and they say appear to float around so it's like how a migrant's actually never truly gonna belong to one place when they're there. They're just there uh, temporarily. So my fifth work is titled Thai Friend or Pun Thai. So this work is a film photographic print on a light box and the print itself is around 275 cm long and it's placed onto a light box that I've made. So the image itself, it comprises of 10 images that I shot using my film camera using Kodak T Max 400 with a black and white film and they're all aligned together to form one single image. So this work aims to capture the Thai migrants assimilation into Golden Mile. So it's very site specific to the place of Golden Mile itself. As you see that as the image progresses, the overlaying of the images actually become more evident and less contrasting. And the Thai motifs that you see actually becomes more present, suggesting the integration of migrants into the space. So when you view a work, you view it linearly. So you're actually viewing it from the perspective of a migrant as if you're walking through the space and you're beginning to see more Thai motives and becoming more aware of the surroundings there. So the work itself actually mimics a LED sign that I found in Golden Mall which is kind of like the main thing you see that helps illuminate the space. It's a shop that stretches two levels and it's pretty big so it's one of the main icons of Golden Mile itself and I found that the title of having a Thai friend also helps to allude to the concept of when the migrants begin to assume into the space they have a Thai friend to accompany them in the journey. Moving on to my sixth work. So this work is kind of like an introduction to my last sub-theme which is the loss in culture. So this work serves as like a turning point and like a tonal shift. So the work itself is titled We the Citizens Of. So We the Citizens Of is actually modeled after a Thai migrant dormitory in Singapore and the work dwells on the idea of the duality of nationality within a Thai migrant. So as you can see, the lights flicker from red and white which is the Singapore flag to red, white, blue which is the Thai flag suggesting the constant change of nationality and the conflict a migrants feel. Furthermore, I also placed Thai spices inside the box and I created a space for the work which is surrounded by neon light which helps to mimic the mood and tone of Golden Mile Complex which is also an enclave for Thai migrants. So moving on to my seventh work which is titled Forgotten. Forgotten dwells on the idea of my personal detachment from Thai culture and Thai relics. I came to Singapore at a very young age and I have little to no knowledge of Thai relics that's used during traditional ceremonies thus feeling a sense of unfamiliarity with them. In this work, I use ceramics to suggest the idea of a dust cloth that covers the Thai relics itself. It helps to suggest that an object has been neglected and forgotten for a prolonged period of time. 
The form itself and Goofus dance is very unrecognizable and looks a bit ambiguous, thus alluding to my idea of unfamiliarity with the objects. Moving on to my 8th work, which is actually in relation with my previous work forgotten. So where are my manners touches on my personal detachment of Thai behaviorism as ever since coming to Singapore, I've slowly stopped doing the action why. So in this work, I painted a ghostly silhouette of myself sitting in a prayer-like manner with a blank look, suggesting a sense of indifference and a sense of kind of like ignorance for the culture and the tradition itself. Why I chose a black cloth is because in Buddhism, the black cloth itself symbolizes neglection and also I included white cotton thread at the end of my action of why. This is in relation to the tradition of where when we're praying is actually the white cloth links us to other people. However, the thread in the world is actually left unconnected to anyone which suggests the disconnectedness that a migrant feels. So moving on to my last work, which is titled Neither Here Nor There. So this work is a short film that actually helps to tie in all my works together in one. So the work itself is an accumulation of my assimilation journey to Singapore, capturing when you first migrate and the migration process to the Thai enclave of Golden Mile and also ending off with the detachment as a migrant. So the black and white film consists of isolated colours of yellow, red, blue due to their significance to Thailand and it also helps to signify the separation from the environment itself. The beginning and the end of the film actually comes together as a whole as I am able to come to a conclusion that I will never be enough to be Singaporean or enough as a Thai citizen and I'm okay with living in that in-between so it's really neither here nor there. As you watch the film, you also begin to see certain elements that pops up that you may see in your, my previous works which is for example the Thai greeting Y, the national flower Rachapur, the LED sign that you see in Golden Mile, the dormitory, the Thai relics, so on and so forth. This film acts as a, kind of like a reference point for many people who are actually not aware of these certain traditions or certain relics of Thailand. So this film itself actually ties in all the work nicely together in one. So here's a picture of my final setup for my exhibition itself. Basically, when I created the show, the flow itself is clockwise. So they begin with in the order that I've introduced the works. And in the show itself, I wanted the audience to have kind of have a contemplative mindset as they begin to question in maybe their own cultural identity and begin to understand perhaps the migrant's journey too. So how I structured my body of works was kind of following the three act structure that you might be familiar with if you study storytelling or film. So the first, second and third work is part of Act 1 which is kind of like the introduction to the team, setting up the idea of migration and introducing the theme to the audience. And then the fourth and fifth work which talks about the golden mile, kind of like where all the Thai communities segregate and stuff. So this is that kind of like the rising action of when a migrant begins to move into a new environment and they begin to find more community which is served since in Act 2 as a confrontation. And then work 6 is the peak of the mountain, which is the climax itself. So this is where a migrant begins to question their identity and this is like kind of like the turning point in my works and the tonal shift also. So 7 and 8, which is in Act 3, which is the falling action. So it talks about how the loss of culture, the sense of isolation that a migrant begins to feel. And then the ninth work, which is resolution. So this is kind of like me um, summing up my whole journey of being a migrant itself is really neither here nor there but I'm okay with that and living in that in-between. So now I'll be moving on to the last part of the video which is the tips and tricks. So the first one, know your goals. What is the goals that you want out of your IBVA journey? Do you want a 7? Do you want a good portfolio? So if you're aiming for a 7, right, you have to be a bit more strategic in that. And if you're going for just, hey, I just want a good portfolio that I can submit to uni, then you have a different mindset. I know a senior who basically did sound for her works, which is not a lot for IB because she cannot submit sound. And she got a 5 for VA, but she was completely okay with it because all she wanted to do was basically make a portfolio for uni and for her work and stuff. So she didn't really mind. So really know what do you want at the end of it because it's always good to begin with the end goal in mind and work your way towards that. The second tip, specify your theme. 
So where do you start? First of all, finding your theme because I think it took me like a year and a quarter-ish to actually finalize that first two statements for my curatorial rationale. So begin with asking yourself, um, what are your interests? What are your inspirations? If you're lost, maybe you can look back at your lower year works. What are the common themes that you tend to go towards on? After you have a sense of what you're interested in, narrow them down. If you make it too broad, then it will become too vague for the marker and the audience itself. So for example, some of the common themes I see is like culture, man and nature, or identity. If you're doing with culture, what aspect of culture are you particularly interested about? For example, the dilution of Chinese culture and cultural identity. And if you're doing man and nature, which aspect of man and nature? Is it the impacts of it? Is it negative? Is it positive? For example, your work talks about the impacts of urbanization on local wildlife. So it helps you to kind of like narrow it down to a scope and helps you create a variety of works from there. So you want to narrow it down to the sense that you still can have different sub themes but not so vague where it's like once when you mention it to someone they're like huh they can't really envision what your work is talking about one helpful note that you can try to think of like your EE topic which is like in the sense that this is very specific but at the same time you have a lot to talk about so you can structure your points which is like your works in a sense one thing you can do to start off is maybe create like a mind map you can talk about for example culture and then you can branch it off to sub themes so maybe the first part is the embracement of culture like your appreciation of culture and the last part can be ooh dilution of culture so it's like a different sub theme that goes on in culture or or for example, maybe culture and you talk about food, festivals, traditions, blah blah blah. I also try to think of themes that are actually not too cliche or too common because I feel that it's been overdone. So every time you try to make something, people be like, they're just going to compare yours to someone that's done it before. So it's not always good to have that. Try to think of something that's unique to you, bring it out and showcase it into your art. So the third tip is use the rubrics as a guide or an indicator for your works. So although this is very um, controversial because you can't really mark art, right? So once you have rubrics for art, it's like, we like, hey, like, what, 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 why? But in a sense, it helps you if you're really strategic and you really want that six or seven. So the main three components is technical, conceptual, and cohesiveness. If you want to score high for the technical component, maybe you might want to do very detailed works or maybe you're really pushing the mediums that you're using, the tools that you're using. So the technical execution must be very strong. So for example, very detailed paintings, detailed um, ceramic pieces, very int intricate carvings on sculptures, blah 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 blah. So for conceptual, this one's a bit tricky because it's very subjective on how you mark conceptual work. So I think one thing maybe you can take note of is the explanation of your choices that you make for your work. So maybe when you're using certain mediums or certain compositions, certain colors, certain scale, blah blah blah. Just make sure that you have the artist's intention that goes behind it and there's like a certain meaning or symbolism into it. It helps it to make it conceptually strong and could be cohesive also. Which links on to the third component which is cohesiveness. I think this is something that a lot, a lot of people tend to to like the last minute but I think if you begin with always thinking of like okay I'm gonna make a cohesive um, body of works, cohesive body of works I think this will allow you to really score pretty high in this band score so how do you make a cohesive body of works? conceptually cohesive is something that I think people will definitely take the box but I think visual cohesiveness is something that really makes it at first glance it's like wow okay he's gonna score really high on the cohesive band mark from what I observed, it could be through the use of colour. So for mine, it was the main colour scheme was yellow, black, white, and certain pops of primary colours. For some of my friends, I noticed it could be, for example, a pastel tone, it could be black and white, or one of my friends, he did like a fully green but only pops of red so it's very interesting and unique also it's kind of similar when you're watching a film for example any of like Wes Anderson's film he always has a certain color palette and a certain aesthetic to it that 
makes his works all very cohesive and very unique to his own style. And it could also be cohesive and shoe maybe materials. So if you're someone who likes to do a certain sculpture like wood sculptures and then maybe one of my friends she did her body of works was focused on the Korean paper. So having that medium be something that tied all her works together was also very interesting. So in cohesiveness, in conceptual cohesiveness, it could be the way that how each work relates to the other because you might have one theme however certain works just feel a bit odd or how does that relate to the theme itself so it could be true maybe if you want to have a narrative similar to what I did was having one work flow to the next work to the next work to the next so having each um, work introduce the next work itself and it could also be through the use of conceptual grouping which I observed one of my um, seniors she did basically she had eight works and the works come in pairs so her first and second works share the same concept but they are executed differently so one can be like ceramic the other be like a print but it's like share the same concept and all of those concepts follow all the umbrella underneath her theme for a body of works so for mine it's also in the sense of like conceptual um, grouping which is like the first second and third work is one group which is the introduction like act one fourth fifth and sixth which is act two and seven and eight and nine which is the act three so having a sub theme could be um, easier for you especially when you're making your works also so when you're looking at the rubrics itself and if you're someone like me who kind of go towards more conceptual works not as much technical works so if you really want to be strategic about it and aim for that seven if you have very heavily conceptual works that doesn't show that much traditional techniques so you might want to create more works that helps to balance it out so for example i've created my um installation work which was very conceptual, not as much technical, which is because it's like laser cutting. So I created my painting to show my more technical side that hey, I can do paintings too. So moving on to my fourth tip, which is to have a sketchbook or a journal. Even though you don't really need it for marking or anything, but it's just really for your own personal use. Because I feel that having your own thoughts about your work, about your art, and how you develop your themes is very important. And especially writing it down, it helps to concrete your idea. It really helps you to start that workflow and also have to visualize your ideas. And also I use my journal not just like for sketching but also to write down my thoughts and problems that I face when making my works. I face so 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 many 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 problems when it comes to making this body of work. So having a journal is just kind of having all my thoughts down and then it's good to also look back when you're conceptualizing ideas and such. The last tip is start making! Oh my god, I wish someone just told me this when I was in year 5. Like, in year 5, I overthink a lot. The Scarlet Works that I thought was going to be my final exhibition but I threw them out because they, they were not it but I just but in a way it helps me get to like where I am you know it's like a stepping stone so really everybody has their own way their own process when it comes to art making so the first one is like maybe starting with a concept in mind so you already have a clear direction where you want to go and the material and the medium comes in later the second one is maybe starting off with material or if you're someone who's like I want to do a ceramic piece no matter what you know like I'm, I'm comfortable with that like sis just do it and then the concept can come along the way or the third part could be starting with a subject matter so if you already have like sort of the subject matter in mind and it's just researching it maybe it could be a person so you interview the person blah blah then your concept will form along the way and your medium will come along the way too first the first few drafts of your works will always be pretty bad but that's the thing is that it's always better to have something to refine than having nothing at all because that's something i learned like i think having just sketches and having plans and ideas on paper is good it's, it's really good to read really um, plan your ways around it but I think once you start playing around with materials with concept and ideas and stuff and just start making it will mix it will makes your idea grow even more and the concept will come naturally so don't overthink it just start making your art and if you feel lost or anything along the way always always consult your teachers your mentors your friends even because they can be really really helpful to give you insight on something that you didn't notice before
And yeah, if you're year 5 or year 6 that's about to go through the depths of VAIB plus the strong, you got this and all of the information that I've created for the notes and stuff for my juniors are all uh, linked down below that you feel free to check it out. It's all free, though, anything. Yeah, it's just just felt like sharing this with everyone that it could be helpful. Yeah, so that's it. Uh, thank you for watching this all the way. I don't know how long this video is. Oh my god, how are you still here? Wow, I love you so much. <laughs> yeah, so thank you. Uh, as you can see, I'm kind of dead right now. So yeah, thank you so much for watching and see you next time. Bye!